Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our adventures here in Ace Attorney Trilogy. The current one is Episode 2, Turnabout Sisters, in the first game, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we had a lot of fun. I just... This game, it gives me, it, it feeds, it feeds my soul, I don't say. It is very nice. But, we shall go and uh, continue. Right now, we should be heading into the trial proper after that uh, jerk something Berg decided not to help poor Maya. And hopefully I'll be able to remember Mia Maya, Mia Maya. They are two different names. And they are pronounced specifically. Remember them properly. September 7th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number one. The first time we see the Edge Boy. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your pin opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. I need to find a good voice for Edgeworth. As well as remember the <laughs> Dick Gumshoe's voice. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe... Please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death... Oh, the... And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Well, technically, uh, from the Diddly D uh, phone call, we know that it technically is just a statue. Well, more like a container now. Floor plans added to the courtroom. Oh boy, so uh, I wonder if I'll be able to actually use that as an objection. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Already with this testimony in cross-examination. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why, we had a witness account describing her. Well, technically, she shouldn't be able to because she only saw me, didn't she? Because she only screamed, police, with the phone in her hand like that, when I was alone in the room. I heard uh, Phoenix had already taken uh, Maya to a couch to, because she passed out. So... Don't know if that might not be a thing I'll need to diddly dee. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Smack. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's... Ah, so this is going to be the uh, tutorial on press them, press the advantage, make them describe more so you can pick them apart. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. 
Heh, <sighs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Cross-examination time. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call is from a customer at the Get Gatewater Hotel right across from the crime scene. Okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right. I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So tell us who, who the two people found... My brain. So tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll press just because I can. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With that funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why's that? What's your reason? We, why, we had a witness account describing her. I think this is the one that's going to matter the most. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal! Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can have its disadvantages. Yes. Uh, sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Witness testimony. Hard evidence. After scour uh, securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Uh, Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I know I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. After securing the suspect, I examine the scene of the crime with my own eyes. Don't really think there's much reason to press that. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Let's press that. Maybe get more information. Just because you found it. Nope, th that's not what I wanted. Ah, <gasps> uh, the killer! Th the killer! Anyone can see that. Oh, you're saying the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please. She was framed! Hold on, if that's the case, where's your evidence? Uh, uh... So this is the game kind of pushing me, it's like, how dare you? Pick your pressing more carefully. I guess that was a bit of tall order for you. Though it was without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Uh, well, detective, tell us what was written on the memo you found. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died... Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm not actually going to present. Because there's the... Wait, death was instantaneous! Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, Detective. Oh. Let's talk about the reality, shall we? Um, I guess I haven't heard of many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Um, uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! That didn't go so well. Th that's right! What do you say? That's his whole testimony, okay? There has to be a contradiction in there, and I think I found it. It's at the very end, because it said... Instantaneous. Objection. Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say the victim, Maya Fe, Mia, Mia Fe, Mia, Mia Fe brain, get the names right. Mia Fe wrote this note that she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fe. That's really what you're saying. What? what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately! But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Wh when The day after the murder, because the murder happened at 9 p.m. I was taken into questioning and only let out the next day. The day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... I just love the smugness. That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? what A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to the blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? <laughs> You're a sham, Edgeworth. The detective's a sham. I'm a sham. I don't know what to pick. They're all glorious. They're all glorious answers. Let's see. Hmm. The detective's a sham. I don't know. I don't know which one would be a good thing to say. They probably don't matter in the long run. These are just flavor text, ha ha ha, but I don't know. Because that could be seen as attacking... Hmm. The detective's a sham. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me a faulty report? Huh? I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe... <clears throat> I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Uh, I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What but... Oh. Your Honor, I submit this report to the claim. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Die from a blow <laughs> by a blunt object may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, Your Honor... The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. But we need more information. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. 
Now this is where the real juice is gonna come from. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? What voice did I give you? Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. Wink. Already we need order. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like, in my hotel room, tiki. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fane Co. Law Offices. Mm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Now this is where the real fun begins. But before we go through this, I want to look over the court record just to make sure. Because this is where the real juice will come in. Because we have the, uh, un the autopsy report, which is just like, yeah, died. But the time doesn't really matter. It was like 9 p.m. We have a phone conversation. Yep. Yeah, which should be able to help a little bit somewhere. I don't know where the glass shards will come into play. Because, hmm, within the statue. But the wiretap will definitely come to, come in handy because we'll be able to say something about maybe that uh, receiver on the phone that was unscrewed and then the wiretap. And of course, the fact that she screamed when I was alone in the room with the body. It was like nine at night I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Wink. That's not a lot of information. Hmm. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see the need to trouble the witness any. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you are Mrs. Mia Fay's understudy, will you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I wonder if the no, I won't leads to a non-standard game over. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know. How do you know it was nine? Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Go for it. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at the time of night. I... Ugh. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, stop him! The poor girl! Order! Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? And then, ooh, I saw a woman of long hair being attacked. The woman with long hair, that was Mia Fey? Um, um, slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? Hmm. Hmm. I'll press on this one, too. 
How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. I question the testimony. Because we would have trouble. Hold on a minute! That testimony stinks! What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. You're lying! Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Because <laughs> it would be hard to tell people. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay, if you'd really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her! And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if that... She was dressed the way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise, Wink. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I thought I was going to bring up that it would be hard to see somebody clearly from her hotel window, since we were there. I did see everything, I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, that kind of statuey clock, the finger, I think. Well, what does the actually of my report not startle you, Tihi? We're definitely gonna have to press on the statue one. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. We're gonna have to say, how do you know it's a, cl a, stat uh, a clock and not just a statue? Did see everything I did. Then the girl in the hippie, and she hit her with the weapon. A clock. Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, d don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. So yeah, that's just, uh telling you that you have a thing. Objection! Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said this statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? <laughs> the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue of trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. I will not! But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers of these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Ugh, that was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because... I heard it? Yes, I heard it. It say the time. So, you've been in the law offices of Fane Co. No, 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 hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room, hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of Fang Co were, where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, because I have one more. No, Your Honor. Can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing the clockwork! How could you possibly... Just take a look! Right now! Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. 
Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? Well, Miss May? Tsk, tsk. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty as you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true, that is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? I can. Ho oh, ho, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... The cell phone. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, ooh you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Uh, a good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 19, uh, 9, 27 a.m. Still just a piercing beep. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> ma, ma. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know the weapon was a clock? Also, I don't know if it's the game that's doing the periodic flashes of white. It seems to happen when it's like transitioning between sprites. I just wanted to make sure because my capture card has been acting weird sometimes. So I just wanted to make sure it wasn't on my end. Well? Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was it again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, it's made by Larry Butts. The witness claims she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock. The clock itself, it was made by Larry Butts. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And that one, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold at stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Ooh. <laughs> Absolute. <laughs> the hearts spun while she screamed. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it! Die! Got her breaking, breaking on down. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Uh, 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 oh, 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 this is silly me. <laughs> did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did to he, wink. Scary. Miss May, let me ask, tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? It's such a, an intense face! Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. 
Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Hmm... Because the you had heard about it might lead back to... Oh, you heard about it in the case. But she said that she heard it ring. Hmm... Because obviously the, like, semi-correct answer that... Because personally, I... Hmm. But at the same time, she did say a mousy feminine figure. I'm going to say you held it. Because again... Hmm. I'm just trying to think. And plus the wiretap. Yeah, you held it. This is the familiar territory. I'll just use the same approach as with Larry. Miss May held that very clock in her hand. Wait, that wouldn't work. Because the clockwork was removed. And plus, we also know... Actually, I'm going to reload, because... We already know that she didn't do it, because... We saw the murderer. So I'm going to say you heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She had heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There's no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me the evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. The wiretap. Have a look at this. Ah, oh, that. <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May. You were tapping the victim, Miss Ma uh, Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Oh, oh? Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Yes. Can you prove that? I think not! Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Her, here's my proof. The proof that the victim said it was on the phone. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want for you to hold on to me. For me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. And I... Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face! Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer! Again, that intense face! Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! Uh, it's no fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm so, I'm, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Uh. And then she just starts crying. That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippy ta tippity tapping her irrelevant? God, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? 
Ha! I'd like to see you pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> Again, that intense face. Okay, so the killing happened around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular old cold coffee. Iced coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene of the time of the murder. But that's irrelevant, because she still tapped the phone. Which puts her, like, testimony at, like, odds, because... Can you really trust somebody who was tapping the phone and knew of it? Like, everything lines up for her to be involved somehow. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands she saw the defendant Maya Faye commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away? There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murderer somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Hmm. I doubt there's much that we could get from May now. Because the only real things that we could get from her is the wiretap and maybe the how could you see somebody clearly from that distance to make out of, like, an actual identity. I'm going to say call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition. If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? <laughs> Give up. No, accept the condition. Alright, I've got nothing to lose. Except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Huh? Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I like the music in this game as well. It really sets nice, like, tone for everything. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. He even brought a tray with him. I know it's just the sprite, but I would love to just, like, think in-universe that, yes, he brought the tray with him. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado... <laughs> I do love that he's just holding it in-universe. That they acknowledge the sprite. The witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Miss May's room service. I'm the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought, her to, brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. But if it was at nine on the dot, then how could she look out the window just after? Especially because she said herself, you have to drink iced coffee quickly or else you just have cold coffee. I see. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. I'm the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for a nice coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. Nine on the dot, you say? 
Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine, the time of the murder. Precisely nine, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, teehee, I'd like to, like, iced coffee at exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. Because if it still said at 9, when the attack happened... Hmm, because I don't want to... Hmm. I delivered the ice coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. Let's press on that as well. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Uh, absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir, as in so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, uh, she, the guest, sir, uh, favored me with a, um, an embarrass, embrasser, sir. Embrasser? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good! There's nothing there! Is, is that it? So... So I guess... I assume the game would have let me actually press, like, present something. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest! Wait! Please wait! Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. Is really it? Now this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? I honestly don't know. No, I don't think check-in because... We obviously... Because I'm just trying to think. Because bed-making is irrelevant because she checked in that morning. So bed making is irrelevant. Check in I think is irrelevant due to the fact that the uh, again, she checked in that morning and got there. And so it isn't really about her coming and going really, but at the same time she had the wiretap from the office. But I'm still going to say room service. Right? Cuz there has to be something more about the room service. I'm going to save cuz I'm paranoid. Tell me again about room service. Again, sir. At exactly nine, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. $18 was the charge, as I recall. I see. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, uh, rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? Objection. I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, good barista there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if it wasn't specifically asked, sir. You fool! 
<laughs> I love the twists and turns of this. I've done it. I've won. No, you, you haven't yet. Really. They still need to poke more holes and get more truths. We just bought more time. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room. That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... <laughs> it was Miss April May! I won... Some of these would be hilarious to select, but the man with Miss May, of course. The man who checked in with Miss May. <clears throat> Your Honor, as, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. <laughs> Upstart amateur! These accusations are ludicrous! Well, I mean, the bellboy literally admitted that you asked him not to say anything unless explicitly asked. Enough! The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of my affair. Court is adjourned! We bought a day! We bought some time! September 7th, 2.24 p.m. District Court. That, that was only like, what, four hours? Pretty harsh four hours. Mr. Wright, you are amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his with his eyes wide and trembling lips. It's in shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key! Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir! I'm gonna find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. <laughs> that is hilarious. Only one part wasn't stricken from the record. But wait. Wouldn't it have been dodged to the left to uh, then smack the lamp, I assume? Because this lamp is broken. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Mayo doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued. I do like that they're, like, separated into, sp into parts like this. But I am enjoying this. Because... But it does kind of reveal that I think everything... F all the questions for the bellboy would have led to the revelation. Because if it was bed making, he probably would have uh, let slip that two beds were used. And then if he, we talked about check-in, it would have revealed that Miss May uh, checked in with a man. So yeah, uh, did we did we save? I'm, I'm gonna save again, just to be safe. September seventh, three eleven p.m. Detention center, visitors' room. 
Well, hello. I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite moving. Not, you stinking lawyer. I hope you die. Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fallen Miss May. No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there's nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Please, you're scaring the security. You're scaring the security guard. <laughs> so, what is it you wish to ask me then? Hmm? For starters, how did you get to be so totally whacked? Hmm. That man. About the man who stayed with you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose. Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. The wiretap. Why did you place a wiretap on uh, Mia's phone? Aw, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold, so criminal. Um, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in lawyer's school, hmm? Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Your attitude. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Oh, that does it! Bottom fiend, scum-sucking lawyer! Bottom? I can't tell. Does she have a thing against lawyers or just against me? Let's see. Is there anything I'd like to present to her? Not the floor plan. Maybe her testimony. I don't think the receipt, but it would be nice if we knew what the receipt was for. Maybe the wiretap? Like, how did you get it back? Hey, guess what? Actually, I am really hate your guts. So get lost because, well, I'm not cooperating. Thanks, I noticed. So I need something extra to get her to talk. I guess I'll first go back to Fane Co. Law Office. Looks like Forensics is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshoe's nowhere in sight. The police really gave this place a working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. Suppose it can't hurt to take a look around, though. Plant! Mia's favorite potted plant. I guess I'll have to water it now. The sky is blue, and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. Mia's desk, perfectly clean as always. The only thing it's missing is Mia. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Mia cry when she saw it. I'll have to check it out one of these days. You couldn't cram more legal books in here, even if you wanted to. All the cases was that the chief worked on are filed here. Hmm, are some of the files missing? Nah, I'm imagining things. I mean, considering... Why aren't we, like, actually... Oh, hmm, so let's go back to the hotel, then. Ah, uh, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare say so myself. Oh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewaters rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer used a wiretap. We can charge a premium for the room, of course. It'll be great for business, sir. Well, whoa, whoa, Miss May hasn't been charged of murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, your honored guest, please let me know if there's anything I can bring you. Miss May. About Miss May. Oh, her, sir, not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think that the most suspicious person here is this guy. The man. I wanted to ask you about the man who's with Miss May. Ah, uh, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I are the same ilk. We both carry the scent of danger. There we are, in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of the man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo, huh? Could you tell me about this hotel? Absolutely! And on the subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel, Murder Manor. Well, what do you think?
Um, sounds great. Whatever floats your tea set. I don't think there's anything really to, like, uh, show him because uh, there's really nothing here to really... Hmm, but let's see if we can examine anything. Bottle and two glasses rest on the table. Why hasn't he cleaned these up by now? Ah, uh, I beg your pardon, sir, but if you could please refrain from touching those, it's part of the decor, I call it. The last drink before murder. We'll be famous, the talk of the hotel industry. Nice weather again today. I can see the Fane Cole offices, of course. Ah, uh, yes, we plan to install a telescope in that window, of course. Just five dollars will earn you three minutes of a view of a kill. Just kidding, sir. <laughs> By that look in his eyes, I'd say he was more than serious. Huh? There's still a screwdriver stuck in that drawer. Ah, uh, please leave that at his, uh... That's the drawer of terror hiding place of the murderer's wiretap. It's set to become one of the most popular attractions here. This guy's serious! I don't believe it! A simple bed. It's been recently made. Nothing eye-catching here. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything to really search for. And again, nothing that I think we could present to him, because we don't have a picture of the guy, so we'll probably have to go in... Probably to Grossberg. He took down the painting! And I think I see a picture of the man we're gonna show our man, our bellboy man. Huh, looks like Grossberg is out today. Again? Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason. First off, where'd it go? Wait a second. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah, yeah, it was a painting of... Marvin Grossberg? Was it the fisherman? I don't- I doubt it matters, but I'm really going through. It wasn't of sunflowers. I don't think it was of Gosper. I'm gonna say fisherman. Wasn't it? It wasn't very memorable painting anyway. <laughs> How dare you play with my emotions like that. Solid- This desk is made of mahogany from Melchior 7! I have to say it every time. Hey, no. Not mahogany. That guy. What's this? Old photos. There are two lying here. Something's been written on the back in pencils. DL6 Incident Exhibit A, DL6 Incident Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Let me guess. Mia's uh, mother? Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. Photograph. Quietly added. A photo lies on the desk. Maybe I should switch with the one I took? Swap. Because I think this is the guy. This is definitely the guy that we want to show to our man. The bellboy. Bellboy! I have a photo that I want to present to you. This man! Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective! Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say Detective once. You know how it is. No. No, I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about I write an affidavit swearing that's him? An affidavit? This guy's way too excited. Uh, have him write it. Yeah, do it, dude. Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it! Bellboy's affidavit added to the courtroom. Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. And now we'll go to the detention center. You again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now? You don't ha just have a spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. <laughs> <laughs> you, look at this man. Have a look at this. Look, I've said several times I'm not telling you. Where did you? Ha-ha! <laughs> a reaction! This is him, isn't it? What? Who? When? Why? It is him. This is the man who stayed in your hotel room the night of the murder. No, no, that's not right. Nice try, Miss Cooperative. D do you have proof that was him? Hmm? Yeah, proof! Show me proof! I'm so close! Proof. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The bellboy's affidavit. It tells us everything he saw, such as the man you checked in with. Who was most definitely this guy? Now I'm getting somewhere. Push her hard! This is it. 
All for nothing. Time to do a little bluff. No use playing dumb, if indeed that's an act. If you don't talk, I'm taking this info to the press. What? Even though you should have wit been witness to murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have a field day with his reputation. Oh, fine, I'll talk. You, you win, lawyer. Yes, man, that felt good. It's great to be alive. Why are you pumping your fist in the air? <coughs> now, tell me about the man you were with. That man, he's my boss. Red White, the president of the information gathering conglomerate Blue Corp. Red White? Information gathering? Well, I suppose you could call it a detective agency. Hmm. So this is the man that was with you on the night of the murder? I'm... I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. It's okay, I'll just ask Mr. White myself. <laughs> himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? <laughs> that is the first time that she was actually genuine, I think. Well, beyond the rage. But even then, I think some of the rage was manufactured. But that, that, that end is actually kind of chilling. I'm scared. I don't want to end up like her. <laughs> Mr. Red White at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If April May wouldn't have done it, that leaves him. Time to take action. Bellboy's affidavit discarded. Hmm. I probably should have kept that. Because I think that's a little important. We'll head back to the Grossberg just to make sure. All right, this is getting ridiculous. Where the heck is that loafer? Ahem! Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Aha, you again! I forget what voice I gave this guy. Uh, hello, Mr. Grossberg. Well, well. You were quite the thing, my boy. Excuse me? The trial, the trial! He was there? Reminded me of myself when I was a youth. I guess something got passed down through Mia. Maybe? It brings back memories, it does. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. I apologize. I... It was all a bit too much for me, my boy. Seeing you today, I... Well, I... I appreciate the reminiscing, but I'd much rather you gave me some information. What happened to your painting? The other day, I'm sure there was a big pretentious-looking painting on that wall. Pretentious-looking? Well, you know the one I mean. Anyway, where did it go? Ah, uh, yes, well... I got rid of it. Got quite tired of the thing, really. I uh, sold it, you see. Yes, that's right. Sold it? I'm not sure I'd buy that. Wasn't that painting rather important to you, sir? Did something happen? I don't see how that's any of your business. Please, speak no more of that accursed painting. I didn't... I... <clears throat> Today's trial. So you came to see the trial? Yes, yes, I did. Something was bothering me all last night, you see. I couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was it? Well, you see, it's just me, your sister. That poor girl. My boy, I owe you my thanks, truly. I didn't know what I would have done if things had gone poorly for the girl. If you were that worried about it, why didn't you or offer to defend her? And your refusal. I asked before, but why did you refuse a request for her defense? I think I have a right to know. It has to be pretty deep and maybe even tied to the diddly d painting going missing. All right, Mr. Wright. No, no, I'm sorry. It's just I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. Maybe I can find something that will inspire him to talk. You mean like a picture of a man? Excuse me, I was wondering about this photograph. Where did you get that? Give it back at once! Sorry to have taken it without your knowledge, but I have to know. Who is this man? He was most likely in April May's room the night of the murder. What's that you say? Are you quite sure, my boy? What has him so flustered, I wonder? I I beg your pardon, but I must ask you to leave. I, I need to be alone. He's fallen silent as a stone. A rather large stone. I guess I should return that photo. Well, but that's all. I shall quickly check back at the Fane Co. There doesn't seem to be anything, and we can't go into the actual, like, place again. If we have everything, I guess all that's left is to go to Blue Corp.
But I love that he's just like, how did you get that? And it's just like, oh, well, you left it on your table. <laughs> oh, well, that's not conspicuous at all. <laughs> What's with the surreal decor? Welcome! Please furnish me with the title of your personage! What the- Your name! What's your name? I was just inquir- Inquirably asking the title that you go by. Uh, right. Phoenix Wright. Inquirably? Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my gi- Giantesque vocabulary? Uh, no, it's more like pretentious, my dude. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion <laughs> official. Is that really what it is? I don't think it is. I think you are lying to me. My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elites. So I'm afraid I'm not used to conversing with a word elite challenge. What a fruitcake! Hmm, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Uh, this guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. Well, first... I haven't... Haven't I seen this somewhere? Is this a replica? Ridiculosity! I have no interest in anything but originals. That right there is a bona fide original worth five million for sure. Oddly, it was worth three million yesterday. Hmm. Seriously, what is with your odd decor? I'm guessing this is supposed to be a desk. My mind is quite the thing. It is modeled on my body, you see. Well, does it sleek round it or not inspire you? Freak me out is what it does. An impressive lineup of trophies. Judges special runner-up, best participation. <laughs> <laughs> Judges Cooperation Award! Special Good Try Prize! <laughs> They're all participation trophies! Huh, the words Judges and Special kind of stand out. The statue of a man holding up the world. The Blue Corp sign certainly stands out enough. The model for the man is, of course, Mr. White. Truly a work of art! But presume probably too butatious for yet you to appreciate, correct? I think it's a little too butatious for just about anyone to appreciate. This is the top floor of a 20-story building. The view is quite... residential. Well, let's talk, man. Let's talk about Blue Corp. What kind of company is Blue Corp, anyway? Ah, excellent question! We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future, you might say. We are the future. Cell information? This was made in 2001! Yeah, information is the future! In just 10 years, I've built the business up into the grand office you see now. Ah, uh, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, you ask? Because I like the color blue! There is not an ounce of blue in any of this except your hair, and that is also quite a bit of red. Fantabulistic, is it not? Miss May. Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct! She was my secretariat. What a shock it was to hear what she has done. What she has done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed! She is paid to answer phones. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as a part of her duties, but I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is ineffable that she would do this. It sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. Night of the murder. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter. The bellboy can say what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be able to be capable of doing that. Hmm, he raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? He should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
the police, the courts. To me, they are mere toys. Playthings for my amusement. That painting. Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? A big painting on the wall over there. When did you get it? Say, when did you get that painting? Hmm, no idea, I forgot. I've seen that painting before. Yesterday, in fact. Why do I find that painting here today? Mr. Wrong, was it? Right. It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again. Who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend. A mere lawyer. Worth nothing. Zilch zippo nada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney. Grody Burger. What? Ah! <laughs> Am I getting beaten up in the dark? Uh, uh, he, he punched me. Oh, he punched me. With those goddamn rings, those that would be like a stinking, what was it, a brass knuckle. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, eh? Charge me with assault? Charge anyway, I welcome it, for it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my exposition. The police, the courts, may all do my bidding. So you say, but I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand. It is a world beyond your compensation. You came here from Grody Burgers, I presume. Mr. Grossbergs. Yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that this painting of his hangs here? Perhaps then he will tell you? Perhaps he will explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. Go now, skedaddle. There's nothing more to discuss. I thought he was. I thought he was gonna like be beaten up from behind, and I don't think I want to show him anything. And we're not gonna get anything anyway. To Grossberg, we go. Huh? I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat. Ah, uh, him! Dropping Jehovah! Oh, you. What's wrong? You look so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm? I'm not senile yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him. That much is clear. Let's see. So you came to see the trial? So yeah, we already... See, so it, it didn't have it checked, so I wanted to go through it again. Just in case, so refusal will be the same. Mr. White. So I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh, oh, I see. Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit something has been bothering me. Oh, what is it? Well, out with it, my boy. You see, it's just... that big painting. Mr. Grossberg, sir, there was a giant painting hanging right there the other day. Was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp. Red White's office. So, you noticed. I suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected you say? Yes, and I know that what that is. He's blackmailing you. <laughs> You're hilarious! <laughs> that would be hilarious, but he's blackmailing you. Mr. White has something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail. I think that painting is fairly gaudy proof. Very well. This may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get this off my chest so I can finally rest easy again. After all, you were Mia's understudy. Perhaps it was fate. What's he talking about? Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years now. 15 years? All because of the DL6 incident, as you may have guessed. The name on the back of those photographs. As you suspected, I could not stand in defense of Maya because of this. White would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But arresting Red White will be nigh on impossible. 
Impossible? Why? He has information on everyone. It gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound, unable to do harm to themselves and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. So, your refusal. I asked before, but why did you refuse a request? I think I have a right to know. A right, Mr. Wright? No, no, I'm sorry. Well, the DL6 incident. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than the sorting code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium, a spirit medium. A medium? Her name was Misty Fay. Fay? Indeed. She was Mia's mother. She had been investigating a murder at the bequest of the police. And she failed. As a result, the police called her a fraud. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and in the end cleared her of wrongdoing. That murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is the DL6 incident. And the blackmail. So why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know they were using a medium. They couldn't let people know. But one person found out. I... I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It is an embarrassment to me now. As I talked, the police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard about it and he came to me. Only this time... The offer was blackmail. I see. White controls the law of this country as he sees fit. Yet if you would still challenge him, have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something of what she found. Well, back to the Fane Cove. It's funny. Looking at this room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Grossberg said he, there would be clues. Maybe should have another look around. I'm going to assume the case of the files. All the cases the chief ever worked on are filed here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? Hmm. I'm trying to think. What would the alphabetically be the right one to start with? Because... Ah, let's go alphabetically. Let's see if there's an A record in this file that catches my eye. A, B, F, Misty Fay. That's Ms. Mia's and Maya's mother. Hmm, should I take a look? Read it. I have tarnished the Fay name, leaving only these words my mother vanished. I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the power that runs in my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold that information to the press. This parasite who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... Hmm, the record stops there. So Mia knew Grosper. Well, duh, she worked for him, didn't she? Understudied. Let's see, J through S. Nothing much here. Maybe I'll just skim some of this? Skim. Ah, uh, well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest parts here at end in S. Suicide? Ew. It's a collective a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen. There's writing on most of these in pencil. White? This is Mia's handwriting. Wait, I get it. Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drove them all to... I can use these newspaper clippings. Let's find the most disturbing one. Newspaper clipping added to the court record. Article about a politician's suicide. The word white is written in pencil at the top. Check them, because I want to... T to Z, just in case. T, U, I know, W, white! The entire W section is missing. Was it taken? I already put it together, but all of the files for... Oh, wrong one. Were put into the statue, but are now missing. Hmm. 
Everywhere I can go is danger. I definitely don't think I want to go and, like, present these to Blue, because then he'll just mug me. I found this in Mia's files. So she was investigating Red White as I expected. Well, if you wanted to challenge him, you could present this in court. Not a bad idea. Yeah, cause, but I fear that my only, like, actual thing that I can do... Hmm, the bellboy seems to be out. Huh? The sound of water coming from the shower. la di da money-making, money-making, I got the money-making blues. Someone seems to enjoy washing the showers. Well, let's examine this here. The screwdriver is still stuck in the drawer. I'd better not touch it. No, tell him what the bellboy would do to me. But it's a secret. It's a secret thing, it's a thing. Ball, da da, I better not touch them. So yeah, it's basically all better not touch. But come on, touching the the screwdriver could have revealed things. Apparently, Miss May is in questioning. I doubt they'll let me talk to her today. Well, that just leaves to confront Blue and have bad things happen. Well, aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself. But it seems the message has yet not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. I think we're past needing to talk about April May. I've got to put this guy on the spot quick. Hmm, what is the matter? You seem distressed. Not at the murder. This guy's pro at pulling the wool over people's eyes. I've got to put it on the spot quick. Stop that. Your hot gaze is giving me goosebumps. There's no point asking someone this crooked a straight question. I need some evidence I can use ammo. What's wrong? Is something stuck to my face? Why, yes, there's my eyes and my nose and my mouth. But of course, I jest. You need not restrain your mirth, my friend. It is okay to indulge in my cosmopolitan sense of humor. I will not think less of you. Why in the world would I ever do this? I... Because the dude punched me and said, Go on, try and sue me. I'll have you found guilty. So obviously we should keep this. And as well as point out that the records featuring White are gone and like all these things granted that would also maybe bring a bunch of stuff into the open about certain things but eh let's do stupid this is the only clue that Mia left me I better make this one count I personally would not have done this but it seems the only way forward Mr. White see this it's an article describing the suicide of a politician he was embezzling secret government funds then one day word got leaked to the press the very next day he took his own life and this concerns me how I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia. She had a file filled with articles like these. Every one of them was labeled with a single word. White. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. You blackmailed him. You are blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him, either. You are threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You are involved in all of the suicide cases that Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation, Mr. Wrong. What is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, 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 I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. Secretary's office, hello? Mr. Wrong will be leaving now. Yes, sir, I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. <laughs> but... You're right. You are absolutely right. I should be lurking, looking for the killer now. And actually, I've done better. I found him. He's sitting right in front of me. Just what are you insinuating? Mia was on to you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then Mia was murdered, and all the documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So, the culprit would be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it! Secretary's office. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. 
Of course, sir. One moment, please. What? That you? What are you doing calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fey case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quietude! I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing right in front of me. He looks dazed, but could be violent. What? What man? Are you even listening? The executioner, the hatchet man, the liquidator, the killer man. What? Mr. White, this isn't another one of those. Chief Prosecutor, I do not believe you are in a position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police now. Did I not tell you, Mr. Rock? You are a mere lawyer, as was Miss Mia. How dare you! I'll point the finger at you and you'll be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they might make even you look competent. I feel faint. Detective Gumshoe reporting, sir. Ah, Butts, Harry Butts. Right, actually, Phoenix Wright and my friend's name is Larry. All right, pal, Butts is the murderer, right? Detective Gumshoe, I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. What? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. Well, great. Now, well, at least Maya is off the hook now. At least she's not going to be tried as the murderer anymore. I can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me. And the prosecution will be in on it, of course. Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right! Mr. Wright! Oh, Maya. Great, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. Ah, <sighs> now I'm afraid we've switched places. What? You mean you... I explained what had happened to Maya. I don't believe it. How many people does that man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother, my sister, and now you. This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me, is there anything I can do? Um, well... <laughs> Help me break out of here. I love the, the humor ones, but cheer me on in court. Well, you could cheer me on, cheer for me in court. Cheer for you? You mean like a cheerleader? Huh? Um, yeah, like that. All right, leave it to me. Huh? I better go get a uniform and some pom-poms. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what, what, what? I'm kidding. It was a joke. No way. Oh, really? I was kidding, but thanks. It's good to know you're on my side. There really isn't anything you can do for me anyway. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. Then come to the trial tomorrow. But okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Because hopefully she'll be able to say like, Hey, I was at the body before he was. Times may change it. The cr with crime, it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put in on initial court trials. Almost all finish in a day, most of a guilty verdict. I never thought I would end up the defendant's chair myself for this case. And I think, because I believe, isn't this kind of like, yes, it's still hyperbolic. Cases can only last three days, but isn't this technically based on kind of the crude way of the Japanese uh, like justice system in a way where it is kind of focused on guilty verdicts more than actually finding the truth at least I think that is what it is I could be wrong I could be dumb but yeah this is basically a very twisted world <laughs> with that true culprit appearing as a star witness this is it Tomorrow it's me or him. 
to be continued. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do this. We're gonna finish off this, uh, this case. I know that it's probably going to be untenable later on, trying to do one case a stream at least. But we might as well do this while we can. September 9, 9.52 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby, number one. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah, one way or another, this case gets decided today. Ah, uh, Phoenix, look! Edgeworth? Prosecutor Edgeworth? I received a call from the Chief Prosecutor's office yesterday. I was told that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how you try to attack his testimony, if I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What? Does White have the judge in his pocket too? So, Sam, I'm going to be guilty. End of story. I will do anything to get my verdict, Mr. Wright. Anything. Why? Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth, you've changed. Hmm? Huh? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix, right? Phoenix? Well, court will be starting soon. What? But wait! Your defense attorney isn't even here yet. They're not... I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. I hope I'm not, like, clicking too fast that I'm skipping dialogue. I'll need to be careful. <laughs> well, 10 a.m. on the dot. Here we go. How nice of M Maya to be there for me. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're ready? You're up to do this? Yes, Your Honor. I'll be defending myself. Understood. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are already quite clear to the court, today we'll hear the testimony of a witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... It's like he already knows why. If anyone's going to raise an objection and about this, I suppose it's me. Well, let's do it. We have nothing to lose. Mr. Edgeworth, you own explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify in the trial against Miss Maya Fay? Hmm. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time I thought that Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. Great. He gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Why does he just have, like, a rarity diamond on his suit? Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? <laughs> Why does he sparkle? Uh, your name. Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, do my locutions confuse? Name. These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Bl <laughs> Blanco Nino. I am the CEO, or to use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim, Miss Maya Fay? That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder? Correct! And you witnessed the murder from there. <laughs> Why tell you what you already know? Very well, Mr. White, you may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? Ho <laughs> ho Sparkly sparkle. I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> Let him have it, Phoenix. Witness testimony. Let's see, it was about nine, I believe. 
I was quite persifying, uh, that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man, attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, the man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She, too, was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she she ran away, but she, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then it was all over. Hmm. If things occurred as you testify, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant. Uh, I mean, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. I think I know precisely where we need to press. We already know that's at least partly factual. Reading some papers. Bedlam outside, I suppose. It was then I saw him. Long hair. And then me. She was surprised. Let's press on this. Can you be a little more detailed about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course! Comprende! I understand. The victim was attacked, but you, by you, and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? Sparkles! That's his answer. As you know, I am always abso positively perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to reflect this new detail. The victim ran to the left, and you gave chase. Well, hey, motherfucker, we have a goddamn testimony. Ran to the right. Objection! Wait right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left, but that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly stated that the victim ran right! Oh ho ho! It is simple, you have misheard her! I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was right here, and the victim here. If the victim ran to the left as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door! She would have been running into a dead end! Don't you find that odd? Ah! <laughs> Very strange! I did see her run to the left, I did! Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying. It's because he's the killer, and she did run to the left. Because to his left was the door. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run left? So did he witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Both are right. Both witnesses are telling the truth. Ha, <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel! <laughs> Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean he was not viewing the crime from the hotel? If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law offices of Fay and Co., of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Time to show the court where Mr. White was standing. He was standing right at the killer. This is where he was. Look! When the victim ran for the door, he was watching from this point. To him, it would appear that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Order! I will have order! Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt! Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? R Rapscallion? Objection. The postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far-fetched. <laughs> you provide us with so many, much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing? The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I've been unclear, and for this I apologize. You, Mr. Your Honor, I might I be allowed to testify once more. Very well, let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck. You can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. Well, he's gonna try. She ran to the left. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left, and then you hit her savagely. That is what I saw. 
Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see, you hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Well, that's where the autopsy will come in. That does seem to make sense. Will you cross-examine the witness? Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. Now I just don't know which one I will specifically want to, because it's obviously going to be, hey, she died from one hit to the head. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left, and then you hit her savagely. I didn't hit anyone. That's not what I want. Now, now, Mr. Wright, there's no point hiding things from this court. I'm not hiding anything. The prosecution requests that the defense refrain from interrupting the testimony. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Stop. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Why is pressing not what I do? Not does not do what I want. Mr. Wright, if you claim that it was not you, then show us proof. Because it needs to be the right one. I'm going to assume because it has to be this one. From a blow. Mr. White! The victim died from a single blow! Ugh. What do you have to say to that? Uh, now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? Hmm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a ten-minute break. Yes, yes, quite. <laughs> Double objection. The witness is confused because he's lying. I, I empathetically request that there be no break, Your Honor. Yeah, we want justice! Don't let him get away! Very well. If the witness could care to revise his testimony. The crowd's on my side. They're slipping out of this one now, White. Mr. White? Uh, okay. We have him on the ropes. Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. Then the next moment I saw Miss Mia run to the left. The killer, you attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then she turned and ran from the door. Then you did her in with a single blow. Thwap! Is this where the, uh, glass is going to come into play? Thwap, indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, it is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. Heard what fall, sir? Well, see, I looked the other window when I heard that thing fall. You heard that thing? What exactly was that thing? Huh? Oh, oh, that? Uh, the glass light stand! Right, the one that had fallen over at the scene. Phoenix, doesn't something about that strike you as odd? Very odd. Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. White. Huh? W what? You're saying you saw the glass light stand? Yes. Then change your testimony to reflect that. L sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. A light stand was lying on the floor when I looked. The glass stand was lying on the floor? That's the first I've heard of this. Why didn't you tell us about the stand before? W why me? Well, I was instructed not to. Wait! One moment! Give me a minute to gather my thoughts! I'm so, so confused! It's falling apart. Your Honor, please, I ask that you do not allow the witness to be badgered any further. M Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Edgeworth is on the ropes. Very well, the witness may continue his account. I think this is where we present this because it's beyond recognition. Mr. White. It was impossible for you to have seen this light stand. What? Well, the stand broke into pieces when it fell. Ugh. Just by seeing the broken pieces, you would have no idea it was just a light stand. So tell me exactly when was it that you saw that stand? Answer the question! 
Uh, isn't it obvious? I saw the stand before it fell over. So, you saw the stand before the victim was attacked then? C correct. That would be no problemo, right? Hmm. Big problemo. There's a big problemo, or, I mean problem here. What problem is this? Mr. White, let me make sure I have this straight. You saw the glass light stand through the window from the hotel. Before the incident occurred... Correct! That is so! It's conclusive, definitive, undeniable, unimpeachable! No, it's impossible! You couldn't have seen the stand! You know, for a master blackmailer, he is going down easy. What? Why couldn't he? Do you have proof? The floor plan. I sure do, Your Honor. A person in the hotel could not have seen the stand before it fell over. Because we have... the floor plans. Look at this! These are the floor plans to the scene of the murder. Correct, Your Honor. Now look. I need to be careful. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here. Well, note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White, what do you have to say to that? Ridiculousity. Uh, 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 Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards as a glass light stand. So when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell. And the only place you could have seen that from is on the inside of the Fay Law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place! This is high, high drama. Is he... Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I... I miss Mia. <laughs> Looks like we're about to get our verdict. Nope, he's going to roll back into it. Oh, that's far enough, Phoenix Wright. What? I forgot about Edgeworth! Mr. White, I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, hmm? What? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo, confess that you placed the wiretap. A wiretap? We have to live a little longer. Order! Order! Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court, Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Court. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Fay. What does that have to do... Your Honor, the question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office and by who? No, you wouldn't! Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Faye's office. But the wiretap was no longer in the office. And it had to have been gained at some point. So we, may, we might be able to bring that up, maybe? I don't know. In order to place the wiretap, you entered Mrs. Faye's office. Am I correct? C correct You are most correct, Miles! Give me a break! Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Fane Co. Law offices. That is when I saw the accursed light stand. Now I'm confused! Please explain to the court what all this means, Mr. Edgeworth! Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand, at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like you to believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been in that office well before the murder took place. When he went to place the wiretap, he could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed for the baseless conjecture it is. Technically, yours is too. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretapping. 
sparkly sparkle. <laughs> Leave it to me. I feel faint. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fane Co. law offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. But the reason is why. Hmm. So you saw the light stand before the night of the incident. And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over. By the sound? Correct! That is right. I see very well. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine. What am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. It was the beginning of September. I don't think we need to press that. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. Well, let's ask about why. Why did you tap me as foe? This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. I want. I wanted to go back. Well, maybe he's rattled enough that I can bluff something out of him. It's the beginning of September. D do you have proof? <laughs> Miss April May knew the details of Miss Faye's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Ah, right. I didn't see the Fanko law offices. Was it really you that went into the office? Or was it Miss May? Unidentified fingerprints several days old were found in the Fane Co. law offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. If I know Edgeworth, he's already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the Fane Co. law offices. Well, let's press on this. Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I made it a lasting impression on me. Such a beautious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Hmm. I'd entered the thankful offices. Of course, I had done so to place the work at. Do we have anything of... Because there's the floor plans that made testimony that's not really worth much. Maybe I need to present the wiretap? Hmm. Maybe we need to present the wiretap. This evidence clearly reveals the con- Nope. I take a- I take a pounding on that. I get striked. Well, I'm just trying to think. Take from the beginning. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. Is there anything that matters to that? The week before the murder. Because the glass shards aren't used to me. There's no reason to bring up the receipt, I don't think. I had entered the Fanco Law Offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. We already pressed him on that. I think we've pressed him on everything. Uh-oh! Don't tell me I've run out of ammo! Tisk tisk. I'm afraid that's as far as you go, Mr. Wright. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably. No more! I can't take this anymore! Mr. Wright? Are you giving up? Yes, Your Honor. Phoenix! Phoenix, over here! I know that voice. M Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. M Mia! And then I faint. Well, I was saying I was feeling faint. Where, where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Or were you? Ah, you're finally awake. Gah! <laughs> then I faint again! Uh, hey, Phoenix! Gak? That's some way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. Uh, 
I still don't understand this part. This is one of the other things that I know. It's just kind of weird when Mia possesses Maya's body. It does a weird thing. You're... Maya? Didn't you know the Fey women have strong psychic powers? When you accepted your defeat in court, it appears that was enough of a shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So, Maya is channeling you, Mia? That's right. I'm Maya, but I'm also Mia. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's why I came here to tell you. But, but we don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have the receipt in the court record, right? Um, oh yeah, the one you wrote Maya on? Phoenix, White wrote that, not me. So, so what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. That's what I wanted to do this entire time! The front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. A thousand dollars. Wow, big spender. Item, glass light stand. Date of purchase, September 4th. September 4th, he couldn't have seen it because he planted it a week before. That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa. Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go. I think the court is about to reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. Receipt updated in the court record. I wanted to look at the front this entire time. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is the defendant rather a uh, you all right, Mr. Wright? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start off where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Your Honor, please give me one more chance. I promise you this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. But as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any opinion on this matter? I say, let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. Well, my dear friend, we have a receipt. Objection! Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? <laughs> You're graspy! I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The, the other side? Your Honor, would you tell the court what is written on the other side of that receipt? Hmm. Well, a glass light stand. And the date of purchase? Why, that's the day before the murder. You see, Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Fane Co. Law Offices at the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No, it's impossible. Uh-oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you'll agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then that is all for the trial of... What are you going to pull out now? Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. Eh? What? No way he can worm his way out of this one. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's Edgeworth. There is a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Ergo, I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. Well, let's object. Why not? 
Mr. White's guilt is so obvious. There's no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm, well, Mr. Edgeworth? If anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it would be me, the prosecution. I need a day to ascertain whether these new claims have any basis in factual evidence. I see. Objection denied. What? The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. No, there's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is so sure to come up with something, or just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me and all. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course, thank you for your time. Gah! The witness will stay. M mia Phoenix, read this note out loud. Mia, what's this? Mia's memo, a list of people's names in Mia's handwriting. Your Honor, if I may? You're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. You bet I am, my life is writing on this one. I have something I would like to read to the court. A list of people's names. Well, let's read it. The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. S stop! Desist! Halt! P please! Stop! Make him stop! How? How did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt. Right here, right now. Or else this list will be released to the press. And the court's probably like, what is this? I... I confess. I confess. I... I did it. I hit her. I hit Miss Mia with... The thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. <laughs> well, I see no reason to continue this trial. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? You've done it again. That was quite a spirited defense. Yes, Your Honor. I guess you could say that, if only you knew how spirited it was. Well, this court finds the defense. <laughs> Rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Not... Guilty! Again, do they just have confetti in the rafters? <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Thank God for... Uh, uh, what is it, like, Spiritus Machina there? September 9th, 2.24pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this again. But congratulations. You're lucky I was born a fae. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me, and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here's running out. Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. W what No! There's still so much to say! Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Chief! <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix, can you come to the office tonight, say, nine? The office? I'll see you later. Chief, Mia! What's Maya gonna think of that? Because she just had her body taken. But I do wonder, <laughs> like... What what would releasing that list of names to the public mean for Blue? For Mr. Blue Corp, man. Because I guess it could be that... Hmm. I suppose that one could, like... I don't know. Like, w if he has such an information network, why would he care about those names getting out because it would be one thing if it was like yeah carefully documented like these things like this ties th this dead guy who committed suicide to but at the same time i suppose it would all be like that politician who had his information leaked to the public and then he committed suicide so that list of people in conjunction with his information agency and the fact that maybe they could have gotten used some of the clippings from the Fay office, maybe 
they could there could be a tarnishing of his reputation, but and maybe even a grander investigation into the connections, but I don't know. It just seems like just, oh, yes, reading out the names, and then he just freaks out. But I also suppose that he had been through a stressful few hours of cross-examination and having all of his, like, lies slowly carved away. So maybe he's just, like, super frazzled. But in the end, <laughs> bad guy decided to confess. Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came! Mia, I was kind of worried you might not. Uh, of course I came. Well then, I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? Mia? <laughs> you should see your face. Mia! What are you talking about? It's me, Maya! M Maya? What? Did I look like my sister? Look like you were her! Hmm, I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Uh, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See? Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... Huh? She means the office. This office. Someone has to help with the new Wright & Co. law offices, right? And who better but me, Maya Faye, reporting for duty. Wait, now, on second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick! Maya here, ready to get down to business. You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name. Maya said that's what you... <laughs> that's what your friend Larry calls you. Nick? You know what this means? We're partners. And that's how the Phoenix and Co. law offices were formed. You know, when I think about it, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Wright and Co. law offices. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Ah, oh, that's a nice picture. A little bit wonky on... Nick's, <laughs> like, pseudo wonky pog face, but uh, just a very touching image all the same. Good luck, Phoenix. I'll always be here, watching. And then Maya became a force ghost. Right, okay, Nick, let's do it. Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy, burgers. There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on, time's a wasting. Okay, wait up. The end. For that case. Although I do like that the longer cases are kind of their own, like, stories all in all. A brand new episode has been added. Of course I want to save my progress. It was utterly fantastic. I did take my first hit when it comes to the court, because they're like, oh, you did a bad objection, but it's just like, you put me in a corner! I didn't know what I was looking for! And it was literally just to run out the clock until Phoenix fainted. Well, Phoenix feels faint and then turns and sees that Maya possessed her sister's body by basically reshaping it to be Maya's body. It was kind of freaky. But yeah, once again, a lot of fun. I really do like the Phoenix, the, at least this first Phoenix Wright game. Not sure if they're going to throw any curveballs of weirdness in the later games, but this one, so far, has been fantastic. It's been very nice. It has a good feel to it, although this one f did feel a bit kind of uh, wonky with the constantly, like, or at least not constantly, but that one time of running out the cross-examination and not having anything to do. So, <laughs> I don't know. But that is just that little bit of, like, story weaving into the gameplay. But, still, very fun, and it's very satisfying to watch Mr. Red-White crumble as he did. Even if my brain is a little fried and doesn't exactly know why he freaked out as he did at the names. They were just a list of names. But I guess I suppose the fact that... Because we didn't even bring up the suicide clipping from Faye, the Fay office, where it's just like, hey, this myst these mysterious series of murders, well, not murders, a mysterious series of suicides all were, like, had white written at the top of them in Mia Faye's law office. And now here's Mia Faye dead 
and with Mr. White admitting that he went into her office and planted the wiretap. And I still, I thought that at one point we would have, like, I, I really, really, really thought the fact that the receiver was unscrewed the night of the murder and the wiretap was moved like seemingly recently because there was a freaking screwdriver with the wiretap and the receiver to the Fay and Co. law offices phone was unscrewed the night of the murder, implying that just implying that for the wiretap to have been the, like, and it had to have been moved that day. It just like, I thought that would have played a role in the case because they checked into that hotel that day. There's a screwdriver and the wiretap in the same drawer. The receiver was unscrewed at the scene of the crime, meaning that somebody had to have gone into the Fay and Co. law offices the day of the murder at least to get the the wiretap. <laughs> and I figured that like it would have been neat if you could like chain together some of the evidence like like why where is the missing paperwork? It wasn't in the thinker. They wiretapped the phone that the conversation said, "Hey, I'm going to put these pieces of case paper in the thinker for safekeeping." And yet the pieces of paper were missing and the thinker itself was used as a murder weapon. On top of that, these people who knew that those papers were in there because they wiretapped the phone had the wiretap so it's just like, come on. It's just like, it's just, I just feel like that information would have come up. Maybe, like, maybe I could have. Maybe I could have done that somehow. I don't know. It just, it feels like that kind of information. The fact that obviously they wiretapped the phone. They had to have gotten the wiretap that day because there's a screwdriver and the wiretap in the hotel room that they only ordered that day. Meaning that on the day of the murder, they had to have gone in and gotten the res the wiretap out but why would they not take the wiretap and re like do the receiver properly to avoid suspicion and because it was loose but it's just, i feel like that information would have played a role in the case and again maybe it, i could have but i failed to i don't know it just feels like that would th there was just within the bounds of the game there didn't seem to be a moment where i could bring that up because it's not like, oh, the receiver was loose note or, and I, I like, I tried to use the wiretap once, but who knows? Maybe I just did it at the wrong point and Mia coming out of nowhere was like, hey, you, you, you could have done a thing, but you failed. But I don't think so. I think that plays out the way it is every single time. But I don't know. I don't know. Ba -ba -ba. But, yes, Ace Attorney is a load of fun. I'm really enjoying the game. It really gets me pumped. I really like doing the voices. I need to talk more about the case in general. More. Especially during the the cross-examinations. I just get really into it and doing the voices. I need to actually think through the processes more. But granted, a lot of the time it's kind of obvious. But I think I actually do like talk things through. But I usually do them very quickly because I want to do the objection. But, yes, thank you very much for watching. Ace Attorney is loads of fun. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, Neon Icy Wings for edited content. I swear it's coming eventually, brain notwithstanding. And then Neon Icy Wing. No, I already did Neon Icy Wings. That's the edited content channel, you idiot, you fool, you other moron. But, bibbidi pa. when it comes to non-edited content, this content, the gaming content, there's Neon Icy Games on YouTube, in which I stream games and then upload the offending VOD back up for uh, posterity so people can go through and like, ah, these are the adventures he's had on stream. And then I have a bunch of other sites for art. Oh wait, I also have Twitch, Neon Icy Wings Twitch, also dual stream there, because like, hey, you can do that. And I think it's only like partners that can't do that. It's weird. The world is weird. Social media is weird. So weird, that's why I have a link tree, which should be found in most of my, like, description boxes. It should be, like, linktr.ee slash neon icy wings. Link tree has weird, like, uh, 
has a weird URL. But there it should lead you to the various art sites that I post my art to, like DeviantArt, Twitter, Newgrounds, and Tumblr. I'm trying to draw more. I have been drawing more. That's one of the few things that I've been doing semi-consistently. I still need to make that edited video and get into the flow of doing edited videos. But Brain is like, ah, complicated. Brain is mean. So it says, hey, go complicate the thing. Even though I really need to make them uncomplicated so I can get through the hell that is the editing video process. That is the thing that eats away my soul more than anything. Writing scripts? Nice. Voicing it? I've, I've been... It could be the evil brain chemicals, but I have been, like, down on my voice lately. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe my voice has de digressed. Maybe my brain just likes to attack things I like. I don't know. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. All those things, art, videos, streaming. And if you want more from me, they're all there. And I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.